is Fair Issues on the Mormon Faircast. This week's article is entitled, Challenging Issues and Keeping the Faith Part 15 by Michael R. Ash, read by Stephen Densley Jr. This article and others by Michael Ash can be found at mormontimes.com. This article was used by permission of the author in Mormon Times. What are the consequences of not following a prophet or for disagreeing publicly or privately with statements by a prophet? It's important to reiterate that prophets may speak about historical, scientific, or other issues that really have little, if any, bearing on the salvation of souls. In some cases, they may express matters of opinion or share insights from their own gospel study and spiritual knowledge. They can also speak the Word of God. If we fail to seek our own testimonies, and therefore fail to heed the God-given counsel of the prophets, we are the ones who will miss out on the blessings. But what if, after praying for guidance and confirmation, our own personal views diverge with a particular teaching of the prophet or church policy? To quote again a statement made by Joseph F. Smith, as originally quoted in Part 2, Members are given the largest possible latitude for their convictions, and if a man rejects a message that I may give him, but is still moral and believes in the main principles of the gospel and desires to continue in his membership in the church, he is permitted to remain. So long as a man believes in God and has a little faith in the church organization, we nurture and aid that person to continue faithfully as a member of the church, though he may not believe all that is revealed. We can disagree. We are not asked to follow blindly. We are not punished for rejecting something that runs contrary to our personal conscience or testimony, although we will forfeit blessings if the things we reject come from God. We are, however, asked to live by certain principles, especially if we have church callings or wish to attend the temple. While the things we believe are strictly personal, behavior must, at least to a degree, conform to a pattern expected from members. Not living some of the principles will naturally cause some friction. Throughout LDS history, there have been members, and at times other general authorities, who have disagreed with some church leader on gospel, historical, or political issues, and even in the interpretation of certain verses of Scripture. Typically, there is no church discipline for these dissenting views. In regards to church membership, the institutional church is typically more concerned with orthopraxy, right living, than orthodoxy, right belief. Some people, especially critics, claim that the church punishes those who disagree with the prophets. This claim, however, is for the most part untrue. In a 1993 October General Conference address, President James E. Faust said that free discussion and expression are encouraged in the church, but should obviously operate within limits. As an example of those limits, he repeated a story told in 1869 by Elder George Q. Cannon. A friend wished to know whether we considered an honest difference of opinion between a member of the church and the authorities of the church was apostasy. We replied that we could conceive of a man honestly differing in opinion from the authorities of the church and yet not be an apostate, but we could not conceive of a man publishing these differences of opinion and seeking by arguments, sophistry, and special pleading to enforce them upon the people to produce division and strife and to place the acts and counsels of the authorities of the church, if possible, in a wrong light and not be an apostate, for such conduct was apostasy as we understood the term. This doesn't mean that we can't publicly discuss differences of opinions on issues where there is no revealed doctrine, such as Book of Mormon geography, which scrolls relate to the Book of Abraham, etc. It does mean, however, that those members who become vocal critics of the Church and speak out against the leadership, foundational events in LDS history, LDS practices, or the Scriptures, have at times been disciplined. It is one thing to disagree with the prophet concerning a policy or interpretation of a passage in the Bible. It's another matter to publicly undermine the prophet or church leadership or to claim that the Book of Mormon is fictional or that Joseph Smith never saw the Savior. With the recognition that prophets are fallible should come the recognition that we are also fallible. If prophets can get some things wrong, so can we. 
If we strongly disagree with a policy, counsel, or scriptural interpretation, we can privately voice our opinions or decide not to follow the counsel or further promulgate the interpretation. We should not, however, lift our hearts in pride, thinking that we are infallible, and insist that others follow our beliefs instead of the prophet. If you like this podcast, you can help promote it by rating it in iTunes and by writing a review. Post a link on your blog and Facebook page and tell your friends about us. Questions or comments about this episode can be sent to podcast at fairlds.org or join the conversation at fairblog.org. Michael R. Ash is the author of the book Shaken Faith Syndrome, Strengthening One's Testimony in the Face of Criticism and Doubt, as well as the book of Faith and Reason, 80 Evidences Supporting the Prophet Joseph Smith. Both books are available for purchase online through the Fair Bookstore. Music for this episode was provided courtesy of Lawrence Green. The opinions expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or of Fair.